Welcome everybody to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Burchell. Today we have an art journal tutorial for you and we're going to be using the collage and a negative painting techniques. It's entitled, Wherever You Go, Leave a Heart Print. And here's a sneak peek. Follow me on Instagram. Here's the address. See what I'm up to on a day-to-day -day basis. Don't forget to hit subscribe or share this video with your friends. So recently I watched the video tutorial by So Crazy and she used collage and she had this face in it. So I created this one. And so this whole background was started with collage and stamping. So I wanted to play more with that technique. So this one was kind of in the blues and purples. So I'm going into kind of purples and violets and pinks on this one. So I pulled out some of my collage papers that I made on deli paper, some of my gel prints. I have some music papers and dictionary papers, as well as some doilies that have been stained in coffee filter. Some of my homemade uh, stamped tissue paper, and I'll put a link to that mixed media technique tag video. Just little bits that you can use for collage. And I have my Canson mixed media page and I've gessoed the page to start with. So using gel medium I am going to collage bits and bobs of this onto this page. Now So Crazy does it um, in a very specific manner and you can check out her video. I kind of start with that but deviate and do my own thing, which is what we should be doing. You know, find somebody that inspires you and then play off of it. When I started art journaling, I really didn't understand the whole collaging thing other than for to collage a focal point. And I think we've come full circle. So now I want to play with that. So I'm just ripping these pages and I want, I don't like straight edges. So I'm typically getting rid of those straight edges. Now, I know that in the selection of the colors, that is going to be the colors that I'm going to go in, that the, the general direction that I want this art journal page to go in. That isn't always the case when you use collage. You could be collaging these pieces in to get some of that wonderful texture, and you could end up with totally different colors. But that's not my intent. So I'm just layering these pieces. Uh, I know So Crazy use kind of three, always three in a triangle. I've also seen that in, in other um, Art Juno tutorials. So different papers that have different thicknesses and they all collage just a smidge bit different. I just want to get some color on this page and some interest. Just playing with it, trying not to overthink the end. I really have no idea where I'm going to go. And I, at this point, I'm not, I'm thinking I might put a face on it again. Although to do that on camera, I'm not quite uh, confident enough in my face drawing skills to do that. So there's some of my script tissue paper that I just use my script stamp and I make that ahead of time and I keep it in a folder and then it's at the ready. So it's easy to take on a create date, you know, um, on a holiday and it's just one less step I have to do now. So on this layer, while I'm definitely, you know, choosing that color scheme in the selection of those colored papers, the rest I'm adding, and I know it's going to add interest and visual texture as well as physical texture to my final page. So 
I'm flipping through here, thinking I'm done with the collaging. So now using some acrylic paint, I'm spreading that out on my craft mat. And this is a um, shelf liner that has a very interesting pattern. So I'm using this as a stamp. And I'm getting that pattern in there. This is from the Tim Holtz. I think it was Bitty Grunge, but I'll put the link to that and any other purchased products in the description box below in case you want to find um, and identify where they are. Then I've used this Crafters Workshop stencil, which is one of my favorites. At and I'm using modeling paste and just putting the modeling paste through in various areas. I like having that little bit of texture there and I like how the paint catches in its nooks and crannies. So after that's dry, I decide I'm gonna get the color. So this is a crafter's paint, kind of in a peach tone, red violet, quinacridone magenta, and I'm thinking I might pull out some browns on this page, but I'm not sure. And there is some gold in lots of those collage papers, so I might be bringing that. And this is a violet oxide from Golden that's kind of that right color. So now I'm going to add some color to the page. And this for initially I'm going to use it, and I'm going to use the palette knife and scrape it on. There you see me spraying it. I want to get this flowing. I don't want it a solid opaque color. I just kind of want it all over the place, which is why you see me get rid of it because it was just too much and too stark. So I'm back to scraping and you just kind of want that color. You can go up and down, you can go side to side, you can you do go in various degrees. If you don't have a palette knife, Use the side of a credit card. If you can't seem to make a whole credit card work, cut it into smaller strips. I just want some of this color in some of the other areas on this page, aside from the collage papers. But you can see how I used the collage papers or the colors in that as a jumping point for the colors that I'm working with. And don't be afraid to mix craft paint with uh, golden, with Liquitex Basics. You know, it's all about the colors here, which one works best. So I'm just adding colors, diluting it a bit, putting it around the edges of some of those ripped sheets, because you really, I want to bring those out. Now my goal here is to add color without getting rid of all that white space. You'll see how I do about towards that goal. I also want to get some of this paint into the nooks and crannies of the texture paste. Craft hack, if you don't have texture paste, use wall compound. You can buy a big tub of it very inexpensively at the hardware store. Ooh, there I get it kind of running and I'm liking the look of that. I'm simply, you know, I'm playing around, putting a little bit of this color, a little bit of that color. I might be even mixing the colors, the that salmon corally color with the red violet and putting it on the brush and just playing. Worst case scenario, I can always take a coat of white gesso and put it over all of this. I will still have the amazing texture and maybe a little bits of patterns that show through and basically then I can start over. So don't be afraid to play. That's how you learn things. I, that salmon color with the um, golden paint made such a lovely color combination. I learned that I can use that in my art in another time and place. So this entire page took about an hour and a half total. I sped it up a about to half that time. 
But if you want this to slow down, just go to the to the gear and slow it down. But you're going to have to turn off the um, narration. Otherwise, I'm going to sound a little funny. I'm just adding here and there, spraying with water every once in a while, um, either to dilute the paints directly or just to get them flowing once they're already on the page. Just decide I want some more palette, palette pink spread with the palette knife because that gives a different look. Now there's all this loveliness. Now you can take this, scan it, and print it off and you have a collage sheet that you can start on another project. So I've turned this going um, portrait style and I was playing off camera with these hearts and I decided at this point that I'm not going to do a face. In fact, I'm going to do some negative painting with hearts. All this red lusciousness just, you know, and it's February, it's, you know, brought me to Valentine's Day. So I'm just using the Stabilo All Pencil and tracing these hearts. Now, I had these hearts already cut because I've used them previous. I just keep them from time to time in a plastic uh, envelope. And it's amazing how often you go and use them. And again, if you have it in a place where you know it is, it just saves actual creating time because I didn't have to stop and cut out these hearts. Now you can use um, watercolor pencils to trace that and then they kind of disappear once you add paint or anything to that. I'm okay, the, the Stabilo does kind of activate later and but I'm okay with that and I knew that it was going to do that. I could have used a burgundy color, I could have used a white color here, but I really want it to be able to see it. So there's the plastic pouch that I store all my um, focal points and ha anything heart related all goes in that one envelope and that goes into my big blue box filing system. So here I'm doing what I, I've seen many people do. We're going to do negative painting. And basically I want the hearts to pop off the page. So what I'm going to do, I have some white paint on the brush and I'm going to put white paint on the outside of the heart to make the heart stand out. Now this was something that So Crazy did in her video and I've seen this on numerous other videos. Most times when I've done negative painting, I've painted the entire background that color. I've done it all white. So the only thing that has a lot of color is the hearts or the focal point. This time I decided I'm only going to outline it in the white. And I'm, I want it kind of watery. I, I don't want it to be like a opaque, solid line outlining the hearts. But this is the first time I'm doing this and, and trying to get the right um, consistent, consistency of paint takes some getting used to. And it's also, do you like what you're seeing? So I'm rubbing it with my fingers and diluting it a little bit more as I see fit. But you can see this is working to make the focal point, my hearts in this case, pop and stand out. I've seen people doing this with um, gelatos or um, a lot. So negative painting isn't 
isn't a new technique, and it's not one that's new to me, although this is being done a little bit differently than I've done it before. It's always fun to experiment with new ways of doing things. So I put it on and then taking it off, getting it watery. And I'll be honest right now, I'm not exactly liking the white. It's, I'm thinking it's a little too, like it's been outlined. But I keep going with it. When you try something new, sometimes you got to push through those initial concerns. But you can definitely see how that's made those hearts really move forward and stand out on this page. So I'm giving that a dry. And I'm looking at it and I get out the Violet Oxide from Golden, got a good sale on it. And now I wanna bring these out, the hearts out even more. So this time I'm going to apply this darker color to the inside of the hearts. So you can see on this one, you're gonna see me do several of the hearts, but as soon as I get this one, you can look at the other hearts that are there and that you can see the difference that this little bit of doing works. Now I'm using a process called um, acrylic floating. Now if you don't have that, you can use gelatos, you can use distress crayons, you can use watercolor crayons, go on the inside and then activate it. Um, ink tense blocks would work as well. I like using the acrylics because then it's permanent and I don't have to worry if I do something later on that it's going to activate. But you can see the hearts on the bottom that I've done are standing out all the more than the ones on the top. And again, you may come back and add another layer and make it darker, but let it dry in between. Because if you sit there and fuss with it, you just it's just going to make a mess. So whatever color family you use, you, I pick the darkest color. Now, if you can't get dark enough, you could take that color and mix it with just a little bit of black and that'll make it just that little extra dark so that things will pop. Using this float technique and shading and highlighting um, as a way of finishing your pages was one of the mixed media technique tag videos and I'll put a link to that video. That shows it close up and kind of step by steps so that you can learn how to do the float technique or other shading techniques should, that, should you want to. If you don't want to add color, you could have gone with, um, I could have done the Stabilo inside with the black. Instead of using straight black, if you used, um, oh, I can't think of what the black is, but it has a blue tone to it. It's very dark, but it's almost bluish. And that would have looked good here, but it wouldn't be as stark as just a regular black. I'll put a link in the description box to that color of paint because I, I really like it as a substitute for black when you don't want to go with stark. But you can see how those hearts are just standing out even more. Now I have some gold on some of these but I want to bring out more gold and I want to bring out that texture from the texture paste. So I'm getting some of this gold paint on the pad of my finger and rubbing it where the texture paste is on the hearts. I'm not rubbing this gold paint on the background, what is now the background. 
because I only want the majority of this gold to be on the hearts. And again, very little paint, and I kind of tap my finger up and down in the paint, so it's almost like dry brushing. I'm just very light. If you want more, you can always go back and add it. Don't rush this process because you'll end up with too much paint and it'll be more globby than um, just highlighting the high points of that texture. I love that one, one uh, collage sheet where I use the fine liner bottles and did some scribble writing on it. I really like the look of that. It's definitely something I'm going to play with more. So I'm looking at the page and trying to decide where I want to go next. So speaking of fine liner bottles, which I absolutely love, and I'll put a link to these in the description box. I put off buying these for a long time, and oh my gosh, I love them. And it's forcing me to be a little more sketchy, a little bit more, a little less precise. So I'm just kind of putting a border, very sketchy border around the outside edge. just to frame the page. And then I'm just going around the hearts. And again, I'm not doing a solid line. It's kind of scribbly, sketchy. Um, it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I can do that and look at it and, and like it. I've always liked when other people did it, but I just, you know, always went for more precise. I'm just kind of going over it, you know, wanting it to make, look very loose and free. So when I have the fine liner bottles and I have black, white, and gold mixed thin Liquitex Basics paint, and then I just give it a shake and I start, start it off camera or off page just to make sure that it's flowing and there isn't a, you know, that it's nice consistency. Really liking the, the look of that. And, you know, then I decide, hey, I want a little bit more gold, so I grab the gold fine liner. And I'm just putting a coat on that. So often that's something I do even with edging. I might put a dark color and then a lighter color or a metallic. And you'll get a different effect if you did the gold before the black. And I believe I dried the black before I came back and put the gold on. I think I might have used bronze or copper here. That might have looked um, not quite as yellowy. So I'm looking at it. You know, am I ready to call this done? But I'm not liking the white around the hearts and actually off camera you can see I've already gotten rid of some of it so what I'm doing is I'm taking that red violet and that peach color and putting it on a brush and kind of covering up some of that white putting more color there I the white just seemed a little too stark for me so a little too obvious somehow I'll try again and, and we'll get it right yet, but, you know, for this one, I just needed to add a little bit more. And I've seen where other artists have used, take the Stabilo, or take their watercolor pencils or gelatos or um, other things, and just kind of fill in that color and even change the color a little bit. Could have added some blue on the background. So the background becomes almost different colors than what the uh, focal point is. And really, I'm just doing it till it looks right to me. 
Now what's happened in here is I've lost a lot of the white space that was in the background. But I do have, you know, there is a lot of white peeking through on the focal points. So I'm happy about that. It's just a very different way of applying color and getting the background than what I typically use. And then I decide I need some white on here and I splatter with the white. And the reason I'm splattering with the white is because I need to add a sentiment to this. Now I could have masked off those hearts, but if you go quickly with a baby wipe, you can just rub it off because everything underneath that is acrylic and is permanent. And I know that. So I'm not liable to lift anything. So I have this saying actually in amongst all my sayings and I keep everything. Typically when, I, when I'm doing a project, I might print off several possibilities or several different fonts. And while I might use one, then the other one just goes into, into my stash. And obviously this one worked rather well for this combination. So I'm just edging them with black, with the acrylic paint and a makeup sponge. And figuring on the final placement. And I'm just going to use my gel medium to adhere this down. Now because I have the white behind it, that's why I made sure I put the white in the splatters. It just kind of makes things work together a little better. If I had left a lot of white space, I may not have needed to do the splatters. So after giving that a dry, um, sometimes my printer isn't as bold as I would like it. And so I'm just going over and just darkening the letters. You can't print out um, a saying with your computer and computer printer, then, you know, use your stamps and stamp out the saying on paper, you know, on a separate piece of paper and then cut it out. You wouldn't want to be stamping the letters directly onto the page because there's a lot of texture on the page and you're not going to get a good stamp. I want this to stand out a little more so I grab my fine liner bottle and kind of sketchily outline the sentiment. And you know what? I'm going to use this to sign my name. Works really great. So thanks so much for joining me on this page. Leave a comment below, like the video, and please share it with your friends. I hope you give using collage and um, using the negative painting technique a try. You can create a variety of different pages and looks. This page looks totally different than the page that I showed you before. Basically both are using the collage technique and the negative painting technique for that matter. So the sky is the limit. If you give this a try, please uh, link me to, so, to it or leave it I am um, a picture on my Facebook group, All Things Mixed Media, Creative Katie. Love to see what you create using a similar technique. Have a question? Leave it below. I'll get back to you. Bye for now.